Let us look to the Lord in prayer this morning. Eternal God, our Father, we come before your presence, God, as humble as we know how, forsaking all others, oh God, focusing on you. Forgetting those things which are behind to press toward the mark of the prize, God. The high calling of your son, Jesus, God, who come today asking you to hide thy servant behind the cross. Lord, that the words that come from my mouth, meditation, God, placed on my heart will be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength, my redeemer, and let the people of God say, amen. Amen. amen and amen. Our text today comes from 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 18 through 25. One of the things that I want to help us with is it reads kind of scary because it brings us back to the times where our forefathers had to go through a morning. Such a brutal time in this slavery as it is in these United States of America. But first Peter goes even farther than that. Amen. They help us to understand how God would have us to behave in times such as these. Verse 18 says, servants, be submissive to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the harsh. I would like to use for a subject today, we shall overcome. <laughs> we shall overcome. As this is the month that they set aside for black history, amen, somebody. I just want to share that for most of us, Amen. And I'm talking in my uh, uh, few years on this place called Earth. Amen. In the midst of humanity. <laughs> um, didn't have it like those who maybe came a generation or two before us. And, but we're not too far being here in Maryland away from the epicenter of those uh, slave ships that came from different parts of Africa where folk were literally dying on the way, being packed in small places, one on top of the other, mm -hmm. brutalized and terrorized and over a journey overseas. Some made it to land, some did not. Mm -hmm. But as I looked at this passage, I, 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 and I look at today and I see the accomplishments and the things that we have been able to do, not because the men and the persons uh, of, of this place or, or, or that place have been so good, but because God has never left nor has he forsook us. I began to think about how our great-great-grandparents made it through. Mm -hmm. And as reading this text, it says, like I said, in 18, that uh, we had, or they had to be submissive, help me somebody, to their masters. And that does not bode very well in our own mindset of today of someone else having the full control of mastery over you and what you do. Come on, help me now. I just want you to walk back in history with me a little while because 
Sometimes we get so comfortable, amen, in our velvet lace seats in our homes and our, our chandeliers that hang upon uh, different spots in our houses and the, the beautiful array of rugs laid on the carpeted floors that we had. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we forget about the struggle was very real. We forget about the fact that me somebody that, that somebody got lashes on their back. Somebody may have gotten their foot or limb cut off because they were being disobedient to the so-called master. Help me, somebody. I'm just here today to let you know that we can't always be comfortable where we are right now because others had to literally lay down their lives that we may have the ability to be who we are and where we are today. But my brothers and sisters, if we think we got this far by ourselves. If we think somehow that it was because of what you did last night or because what you're doing right now, we mistake ourselves and forget the fact that all along the way, God has been with us. He has never left, nor has he forsaken us. So the first thing that God says, it says, Sometimes you got to do the right thing, even under the wrong circumstances. And I know beyond the shadow of a doubt, the reason that I'm standing here is because of my great, great, great somebody, help me somebody, did the right thing under the wrong circumstances. Amen. God has been good. It's man that has been cruel. Man that has been abusive and even my brothers and sisters try to justify themselves by the word. Help me somebody. But I'm here to let you know today that sometimes even in the midst of the times that we're in now, see the bondage uh, of slavery still exists. Oh, help me. Uh, yeah, you don't realize it or not but you shackled right now. You began to do a survey of your life and you look at those things that you just can't do without, that you got to have, got to have, got to do, got to do. Locked in on that TV show, got to watch it. And if I don't watch it, I don't know what's going to happen. Got to have it, got to eat this. Or certain. Oh my goodness, we're still roped in and tied to slavery. That mindset still enslaves some of us not thinking that we can have freedom and freedom indeed because somebody done told you you ain't going to be nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. That still keeps us in bondage. But my brothers and sisters, even in the midst of bondage, God said, look, be submissive to your masters. And I began to say, Lord, that had to be hard. When you're doing what they ask and they still whooping you. Mm -hmm. doing everything that you can, they still treating you like you're worth nothing. But brothers and sisters, they still did it. For this is commendable, verse 19 says, if because of the conscience toward God, one endures grief and suffering wrongly. I had to kind of take a step back and understand that even doing the right thing underneath the wrong circumstances, you can still hold your head up high. Right. You can still look to the hills from which come at your help because it does not come from man. It comes from God. Verse 20 says, for what credit is it when you are beaten for your faults, you take it patiently. But when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. Mm -hmm. And then that's when it hits your heart. Do you realize blood, sweat, and tears? <laughs> of our four parents allow us to sit in places like these. 
the blood, sweat, and tears of our foreparents allow us to drive the vehicles that we drive today. The blood, sweat, and tears allow us to have the job that we have today. Because one thing that the word of God tells us, Reverend Warner, is this. You show your love toward God by being obedient to his commandments. Ah, some of them commandments are rough. Some of them may cause lashes on your back. You don't believe me, want you to ask Jesus. Help me somebody. He said, if anybody knows anything about doing good, help me somebody. Under evil circumstances, Jesus knows. He knew what it was like. Uh, verse 21 lets us know, it said, for this you were called because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. Then I began to understand that a lot of the pain, the agony, the blood, the sweat, and tears that our four parents had, it was not because of who they were, but who Christ were before them. Some way in the midst of all of that turmoil, all of the injustices, help me somebody, families being torn apart, help me brothers, sisters, Mothers, fathers being sold away from each other. Hey, me, somebody. God has showed us, even in the midst of that, women being abused. Amen, somebody. And just used for, for over and over again by their so-called good masters because they will hold, hold themselves accountable, but they were following supposedly the good book, but it was the wrong book, help me, somebody. But yet still, they endured. And he said, well, how do you know they endured, Pastor? Well, I'm still here today. So somebody pray for me. Tap me, hold their mind. Fun enough to pray for me. Even when they were going to hell, they still prayed. And they held on, Reverend Warren. Some of them marched from the deepest, darkest, places of, of, of butyl terrorism of the South and came North to have an opportunity to bless somebody else in their family. It wasn't easy, but in some cases it was necessary. Christ himself began to say it. It says, he who had committed no sin is not that you, you, you do anything wrong sometimes, that places you in the conditions that you're in. Sometimes it's just the evil around us. Everybody ain't got your best interest at the top of their list. You don't have to go far but to turn on the evening news to find out that folk are just simply driving by, killing folks for no reason at all. Just sitting in the car, getting shot and killed. Beaten to death. Senseless. Stopping folk for no reason. And then making an excuse to pull out a gun and shoot them. There's evil that still exists. There are still, help me somebody, those evil masters that still inflict punishment upon those who are weak. But they just don't know who they're messing with. Oh. If you looked uh, from the world's view, you would have thought uh, that Jesus uh, was getting taken advantage of. Uh, but I'm here to tell you that even though they tore the flesh off of his back, even though they put a crown of thorns on his head, even though they pierced him in the side, even though they nailed their hand, the nails through his hands and his feet, hung him on a cross on Calvary. But somebody said the third day, come on, can I get a witness in the house? 
You may have thought that Jesus had pumped out on the first day because nobody saw him. You might have thought that he had went out on the second day. But my word tells me that on the third day that he got up with all power in his hand. I may be going through something right now, my brothers and sisters, from an evil master. Help me, it don't have to be a be a be a be a person, but it could be your job. The way they treating you, it, it, it could be a co-worker. The way they mistreat you, and my goodness, it could be somebody in your own household that's taking advantage of you. But I'm here to tell you today, if you keep on with your head held high, keep on smiling even in the face of adversity, keep on giving God the glory and the praise, and hang on just for a little while longer, because in the end, my brothers and sisters, you shall overcome. You shall overcome by being patient. You shall overcome by not having to tell anybody anything about how they treat you, but we shall overcome. I know by the blood of the Lamb and the what the word of his testimony, we shall overcome. That's what they sung that song one day. We shall overcome by the blood of the slaughter. Those who have tracked miles and miles, help me somebody, we shall overcome. We shall not be stopped in this way. We shall not be caught in the sense of hopelessness. Oh, how he suffered. Said he was revived, but he did not return it. It says he suffered, even though he did not threaten. But he committed himself to him who judges righteously. He who himself took upon himself what the sins in his own body on that tree that we having been died, died to sins, might live for righteousness. For by whose stripes we were healed. My brothers and sisters, our four parents didn't go through what they went through to see us act a fool like we are now. It's amazing to me that we're starting to repeat the same things that the children of Israel did. They got out of bondage. God brought them out. They went through the Red Sea, walked across on dry land. I don't know about you, but right now what I'm thinking, if I had seen that and I had been a part of that miracle, I think I'd be all right with the Lord. Anyone that can divide a sea, help me somebody and try to land it so I can walk across and the water walled up on every side. I believe when I got across on the other side and saw the inflictors, those who caused me torment, those who raised hell and made me try to make bricks with that straw. I believe if I look back over the water of water and across that sea, and the sea closed up on my enemy, those who had been attacking me on every leading side, I believe I would have looked toward heaven and fall down on my knees and began to thank God for what it did. Oh, they praised him for a moment. But after a while, they forgot about that same God that brought them over. Forgot about that God had provided them a new home. Provided that God had made them a place where they didn't have to till the soil. But everything was all provided for them. But they turned around on God. God may have brought us to the institution of slavery as it seems in its physical form. But we still been slaves. Because one of the things about freedom is this. You can praise God in the midst of shackles. If you don't believe me, ask the boys in the prison around midnight. They still praise God. And that's what God is saying in this text. If you be obedient to me, I will get you through the process. But we can't keep on coming through the process and going back the same place that we were before. In some cases, Reverend Warner, we putting our own shackles on. Because when you turn away from God's word and turn to the words of man, God ain't doing that to you. You put your own self in them silver bracelets. And then when we get there, we realize, oh God, come help me get, get me out. 
How about, oh God, keep me out? How about, oh God, thou who has brought me thus far along the way, don't let me go back. Pull me, God, drag me. Because I don't want to repeat what I just went through. We were once lost, but now we're found. Because God looked down on humanity and said, they falling off cliffs. They running into each other. They running, they don't know what to do with themselves. They need a shepherd. Jesus, go down. Do it right by them. Show them the way, how to be obedient to my word. Mm -hmm. And after you've done all of that, after you show humanity that it doesn't matter what side of the tracks that you come from, it doesn't matter your nationality, when you show them all that, that you still love them, in spite of everything that they wind up doing to you. After you've done all of that, you come on back home because you showed them the way and put in their mindsets that they can make it, that they can and they shall overcome. We shall overcome not because of who's sitting in the White House. We shall overcome not by the bank account in your house. We shall overcome not about any protest and or movement, but we shall overcome just like we did over 400 years ago, over 2,000 years ago. We shall overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We shall overcome because you don't have to sprinkle the blood on the doorpost anymore because someone has taken the place of the lamb and it's Jesus the great I am. We shall overcome because we already paid the price that we cannot pay, that he hung his head and died on the cross on Calvary. We shall overcome not because of somebody ruling over you, but because you serve a God that rules over all. We shall overcome because at every knee will bow and tongue confess that he is the Lord all by himself. I wish I had a few folks that say I'm going through something right now, Pastor. I don't know what it is, but maybe it's somebody on your job that's oppressing you and you trying to stand toe to toe with them and fight that battle. But God is telling you in your ear that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You don't have to fight against your enemies. God said, I already got somebody that's battling day and night. I, I believe you have the Holy Spirit that shows you where to go and where not to go. I, I believe that God is saying that if you just be patient uh, a little while longer, uh, you will see uh, the blessings that I have in store with you. I believe God is telling somebody today that that pain won't last forever, that joy will come in the morning time. If you just hold on a little while longer. I wish I had a few folks uh, in the house and online that know that you can overcome the disease that the doctor said you had in your body. I, I wish somebody knew uh, that you could overcome that bad relationship that you went through. I wish I had somebody to know that your children are going to be alright uh, because God got them in his hands. Uh, you don't have to worry about a thing. Uh, I wish I had somebody who knows that you don't have to worry about your finances. But God says that you shall overcome my brothers and my sisters. Slavery was a horrible practice here in these states. But God made a way out of no way. And I don't know what about you, but I just said thanks be to God that I'm not in no physical shackles anymore. Thanks be to God. I can speak my mind. Thanks be to God that where I'm at right now, I won't go back. I won't turn around because I and the world have to overcome not by me, but they overcame 
by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. I believe if I can call my great great grandparent right now and ask them, how did you get over? They said, well, it wasn't because the master treated me right. It wasn't even because of the family that I had. But I believe it was because I got down on my knees one night and said, Lord, even though I'm enduring these stripes on my back, I want you to bless my family that's coming. Ah, that son that, that they took away from me. I don't know where he is, but Lord, please put a hedge of protection around me. And I believe that prayer resonates uh, throughout time and throughout history. And God has a covering because we stay obedient to his word. Hallelujah. Nobody like Jesus. Oh, God, do you like the Lord? Oh, for you say he's all right. When I look back over my life, ah, and I began to think things over. Aren't you glad that God has you right now? I believe this text is for us today to help us to understand you're going to have some unjust masters in your life. But you got to understand that they're just in a temporary place and they really don't have authority over you. But if you even in those circumstances just do good. We shall overcome in Jesus' name. Amen.